Are you tired of feeling uncertain and unsure in various situations? Whether you're aiming to get the best price for a product, negotiate a higher salary, or successfully close a critical business deal, having strong negotiation skills is crucial. In this video, we'll delve into the fascinating world of negotiation and uncover the secrets that can revolutionize your outcomes at the bargaining table. We'll teach you how to secure better deals in any selling scenario and unlock your full potential for success. Join me on this journey as we explore the essential negotiation skills that will empower you to overcome any challenge and seize the opportunities that come your way. Get ready to elevate your negotiation game to the next level. Let's get started. So why is negotiation so important? Well, negotiation is a skill that empowers you to achieve better outcomes, build stronger relationships, resolve conflicts, and enhance your communication abilities. By approaching negotiations with a collaborative mindset and mastering your negotiation skills, you can succeed in all aspects of your life. Knowing when to negotiate is just as important as knowing how to negotiate. If you feel that you're not getting what you want or need in a specific situation, it's generally a good idea to consider negotiation. Whether it's a salary negotiation, a business deal, or conflict resolution, negotiation can be a powerful tool to help you get what you want. However, it's essential to evaluate each situation and determine whether negotiation is likely to lead to a positive outcome. Not every situation is negotiable, and there may be times when it's not worth the effort. Assessing the situation beforehand can help you make informed decisions and maximize your negotiation skills. When it comes to negotiating a job offer, salary or sale, having strong negotiation skills is crucial for success. But negotiating with someone especially when you're unsure about your market value or the right strategies to employ, can be intimidating. Here are some successful negotiation skills that can empower you to negotiate with confidence and achieve the best possible outcome. Active listening. Effective negotiation requires actively listening to the other party's needs, concerns, and objections without interrupting or dismissing them. This helps you understand their perspective and identify areas of common ground. Creative Problem Solving Negotiations require creativity to find solutions that work for both parties. Being open to compromise and finding creative solutions can build trust and foster collaboration, leading to better negotiation outcomes. Emotional Intelligence Negotiations can be emotionally charged, but it's crucial to keep your emotions in check. Avoid being defensive or confrontational, and stay focused on the issues at hand. Assertiveness. Being assertive allows you to communicate your goals and what you want to achieve while maintaining a positive relationship with the other party. Flexibility. Being flexible and willing to compromise is essential for finding mutually beneficial solutions. Patience. Negotiations take time, and having patience is crucial to avoid rushing into a deal that may not be in your best interests. Taking the time to negotiate effectively can lead to better outcomes. Confidence. Confidence plays a significant role in negotiation. When you feel confident in your preparation and negotiation skills, you are more likely to feel in control and achieve better outcomes. Analytical thinking. Analytical thinking skills help you analyze information, recognize patterns, and make informed decisions during negotiations. Understanding data and identifying opportunities can contribute to your negotiation success. Persuasion. Knowing how to persuade others allows you to influence the person you're negotiating with and work towards a mutually beneficial agreement. Using logical arguments, presenting facts, and appealing to emotions can be effective persuasion techniques. To become a good negotiator, it's important to master a variety of negotiation strategies and techniques. By honing your negotiating skills and using effective tactics, you can achieve better outcomes and gain confidence in your ability to negotiate. Let's explore some useful negotiation tactics and techniques that you can apply in various scenarios. Number 1. The Flinch – A Surprising Negotiation Technique for Better Deals The flinch is a tactic used during negotiations to show surprise or disappointment at the price or offer given by the other person. The idea is to react as if you've heard something very disappointing. You do this by flinching, which means you make a sudden movement or facial expression that shows you're shocked or unhappy. 
To perform the flinch, you can follow these steps. When the other person presents a price or offer, listen carefully and wait for them to finish speaking. Once they're done, make a sad or disappointed look on your face. This could include lowering your eyebrows, frowning, or even rolling your eyes upward and back as if you're experiencing pain. At the same time, say something like, Wow, that's an awful lot of money. This statement conveys your surprise or disappointment in their price. The purpose of the flinch is to create a reaction from the other person. Sometimes just the act of flinching can make them reconsider their price immediately. They might lower the price if you're buying something or increase their offer if you're selling something. Remember, if the initial flinch works in your favor and gets you a better deal, be prepared to use it again and again during the negotiation. It's a way to keep the other person on their toes and potentially get a more favorable outcome. Number two, mastering the art of asking questions. Imagine you're in a situation where you want to buy something and you ask the person selling it how much it costs. They give you a price, but you're not completely satisfied with it. So instead of accepting the price right away, you can try a strategy to see if you can get a better deal. You can say something like, is that the best you can do? This shows that you're not completely happy with the price and that you're hoping for a lower one. By asking this question, you create a little bit of surprise or shock, which makes the person selling think that they might need to offer a better price. After asking the question, you remain silent. This puts some pressure on the person selling to reconsider their initial price. They might feel the need to negotiate or improve their offer because they don't want to lose the sale. If they do lower the price in response to your question, you can ask, is that the very best you can do? Or, couldn't you do any better than that? This encourages them to think if they can offer an even lower price. Another tactic you can use is asking, what is the best you can do if I make a decision today? By adding a sense of urgency, it makes the person selling worry about the possibility of losing the sale they might be more willing to offer a better price to secure your decision. Number three, the power of the assertion. I can get it cheaper. When you're at a store and you find something you want to buy, the salesperson tells you the price. Instead of accepting it right away, you say, I can get this cheaper somewhere else. Now here's what happens. The salesperson gets a little worried because they don't want to lose your business to their competitors. They start to think that maybe they should offer you a better price to make sure you buy from them. By letting them know that you can find the same item for a lower price elsewhere, they realize that they have to be more flexible with their pricing. They become more open to negotiating and giving you a lower price so that they don't lose the sale. But remember, it's important to be nice and friendly when you use this tactic. Don't be aggressive or confrontational. When you approach the salesperson politely, they're more likely to understand your situation and be willing to give you a better deal. Number four, the art of lowballing, unleashing the power of cash offers. When someone asks you to pay $100 for something you want to buy instead of agreeing to that price right away, you make a different offer. You say, I'll give you $1.50 cash right now. Now here's what's interesting. When you offer cash immediately, the resistance the other person had towards lowering the price decreases a lot. There are a few reasons why offering cash makes people more willing to do business with you. First, when you pay in cash, it saves the person selling the item money. They don't have to worry about the costs of storing or keeping track of the item, which can be expensive for them. Second, by offering cash, there are no fees involved, like the ones associated with credit card transactions. This means the person selling the item doesn't have to pay any extra charges, which can make them more open to negotiating with you. Third, offering cash gives the other person a sense of instant gratification. They don't have to wait for the payment to go through or deal with any additional steps. It feels more immediate and convenient for them. So, when you offer $1.50 for an item that's priced at $1.100, they might counter with an offer of $1.60. Many times you'll find that even if you make a very low offer that seems way too low, they will sell it to you for much less than you initially thought you would have to pay. Number 5. Mastering the Art of the Nibble Unlocking Extra Benefits in Your Deals In the process of making a deal or purchase, 
Sometimes you may want to get a little something extra added to the deal. This is where the concept of a nibble comes into play. A nibble is when you ask for an additional benefit or item to be included in the deal after you have already agreed on the main terms. For example, you might say something like, Okay, I'll agree to this price if you throw in free delivery. If the other person hesitates or seems unsure about adding something extra to the deal, you can respond in a pleasant way by saying, If you won't include free delivery, then I don't want the deal at all. The important part is to make it clear that you are willing to walk away from the deal if they are not willing to add something extra to it. By doing this, you create a sense of importance and urgency for them to consider your request. Here's how it typically works. First, you agree on the purchase of the main item and settle on the price and terms. You make it seem like the deal is almost finalized and the other person feels satisfied that they have made the sale at a price they are happy with. Then, you bring up the additional request or benefit. This approach can be applied to various situations, whether you are negotiating the purchase of a house, a car, a boat, or any other item. By adding on these extra requests after the main terms are agreed upon, you increase your chances of getting something extra out of the deal. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss an upload and you can enjoy the excellent content I send your way.